This machine is a built-in camber bar for that ball or deep stretch. Now, as you can see, Mr. Honey Ranbot is in the way again, putting his hand onto Chris's chest. I'm gonna guess almost purposelessly is my personal opinion, no offense to anybody. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. I am the co-creator of the RPI Hypertrophy app, a professor of exercise and sports science, and a mega critiquer of people that are in better shape than me on the internet. Ugh, that last one sounds weird. But that's what we're doing today. We are gonna look at Chris Bumstead's chest training, some of his tricep training, and his back training to see if it's up to muster and if we can't level a few basic criticisms that are all positively meant to let you get more out of that training. And if you're trying to look like Mr. Seabum, maybe you can take our advice here that we give on this channel in addition to his basic template and make the best for yourself so you can have huge triceps, mega pecs, and a back big enough to push everyone else out of your life and leave you lonely forever. Yeah, why not? Let's get into it. I'll fail here, yep. and so then I'll help me get a few 100%. full reps. Right here, perfect, <clears throat> again. This is a great technique, very good eccentric control, super deep stretch at the top. Some folks will say that if you just come up to here, that's good enough. BS, you want as big of a stretch as possible on this to really cook those lats. Good. I'm gonna lock it in, Chris, come on. And a pause at the bottom at that stretch. I really, really love it. Seven, more Chris, eight. Ah. Bent rows. These aren't the worst bent rows I've ever seen. He's getting some really good stretch and good contractions. I would adore if Mr. Chris Bumstead bent over considerably further, and thus it would require for him to use less load. He could get a deeper stretch, and he would be able to maximize his back growth while minimizing his fatigue, which means over the long term, he'd be able to maximize his back growth even more and minimize the fatigue that would prevent him from growing other muscles as well. So I think it's an all around good idea to bend over considerably further in your rows than most people bend over. It is called a bent over row for a reason. Four nice, come on. All right, ooh. Okay, so we got one arm dumbbell rows. I love the fact that Chris is getting a really big stretch at the bottom. Because you don't have to do it with two arms, it allows you to extra stretch the one side of the back. And it does pet peeve the fuck out of me when I watch people doing one arm rows, but not getting a full stretch. It's like, this is precisely the exercise that you can leverage for this thing. This is what it's best at. This is its best marginal comparative advantage to other exercises. Why not do that? It's like, uh, you know, hanging out with your friend. It's like super awesome and giving you and giving BJ's and being like, what do you want to do tonight? You're like, I don't know. Let's watch Disney movies together and cuddle. I'm like, yeah. But what about the... This is really good. Five. He's doing great technique on this. He's rising up just a little bit for a good leverage advantage there, but then as the row stretches him out, he's lowering a bit for more lengthening, more tension. This is honestly really great technique. You'll notice he's not heave hoeing like crazy. It's all very controlled. He's also not using a gazillion pounds. If you use more than 150 pounds on a one arm row, you're probably doing it wrong and he's doing it very right. This is really, really great technique. Perfect form, seven, good. I love his training partner and cueing the f out of him. Perfect form, number one. Use your power, Chris. Get in there. More. Sheesh. Beautiful. Excellently done. And quit as soon as he couldn't do another high quality rep, which is exactly the point of failure we usually want. You guys, back training is dope. And Chris Bumstead, he does it so well. But with Versa Grips, you can personally train your back way better. Why? Versa grips aren't magic. They're just this really trippy device that's kind of like a strap, but it's so airtight that as soon as you get your hand over it, if it's bolted in, your fist is gonna have to break off of the bar for you to lose the grip, which means you can drive all of that tension, all that mind-muscle connection, all of that technique emphasis into your lats, into your shoulders, into whatever muscles you happen to be training, and then you get the best possible result for those muscles. The grip assistance tool, known as the Versa Grip, is number one in the industry. That's why I use it, and now we're officially endorsed by them, but I've been endorsing them for years because they just work. Folks, there is a link in the description to download. Give that a click, and if you want your training to get better, it'll straight up make it better. Give it some thought. Good. Come on, Chris. Squeeze. Good. Right. Drive, drive, drive the chest. Good. Come on. Few observations. One, Mr. Honey Rambod has what looks like a preposterously expensive watch. 
I don't know anything about watches. I'm just an idiot and it looks very shiny to me. I have roughly the intelligence of a crow. And so if I see something that's bright, I want to pick it up and look at it. He also said that he wants Chris to focus on the squeeze and then he touched his chest. I'm not a big fan of tactile cueing. Uh, I think sometimes it works, but for folks as experienced as Chris, I think it has a very low marginal utility. And I think that emphasizing the squeeze is not the best use of our time because I think emphasizing the eccentric control and the stretch is a superior way of training. It produces more muscle growth, but that's just me being really nitpicky. Otherwise, the technique looks quite good here. I would like to see Chris open up a little bit more, have a little bit less of an elbow angle because he's doing kind of a combination push slash fly. Nothing wrong with that, but I would like to see him try a pure fly where he keeps his elbows very little bent and really stretches super deep in that position. Good, good. Keep going. Keep going. Ooh. What's up, Panada? Uh, Panata. They're Italian, so that's how you say it properly. They need to make a... Cambered Smith. Smith. Yeah. The closest We've, thing they have to that is the Panada dual handle. It's not Smith. pronounced Panada. What, what is it? It's Panata. Okay, so it's Panada. This is the uh, converging press from Panata. It's excellent. I believe it has um, an adjustable bench where you can change the incline angle and maybe even make it flat. And the bench slides back and forth. It's, it's really quite a very good machine. It's also cool because it opens you up at the bottom by stretching your pecs out and then closes in at the top. Um, I've used it before. It's incredibly smooth. Almost everything Panata makes is pure gold. And I really love this machine uh, among many others. And, and it's also cool because the handles are quite um, long and you can choose to take a little closer grip, a little wider grip, a little super wide grip. So there's something here for everyone. Throw it up. Good. Good. Keep going, come on, Chris. This is good. He's getting a really deep stretch, which is awesome. I would love to see him control the eccentric a little bit, to control the descent a little bit more, make it a little slower. I would love for him to pause for one or two seconds at the bottom to really get that crazy deep stretch in the pecs. But other than that, I think this is really good technique. Good. Drive. Good. Come on. One more, one more. Good, good. Drive. Lock it out. Yeah. Uh, forced reps are curious. Um, I always just prefer to do all the reps myself and then do an extra set later to get more of a stimulus. Forced reps can allow you to continue to stimulate the muscle even past its usual failure exhaustion point. Um, I think that's okay. I think the stimulus to fatigue ratio is not ideal because when you're going so far past your exhaustion point and someone's helping you to move it, I think the fatigue that you summate from trying that hard towards the end of a set, well, after the end of a regular set, can just not be worth the small addition of stimulus. Um, it's also from a tracking perspective kind of a curiosity because how do you know if you're getting stronger, if you're making gains? How do you know you're learning the movement and mind-muscle connection yourself without relying on someone else to help you push? I think it just adds more variables to the equation than we would like. So in most cases, I'm not really for partner-assisted lifting. Um, it is fun and it absolutely brings you closer to someone physically and emotionally. So what I would really like to see Hani do ideally is just lean over a little bit further and look Chris right into his eyes and, and ask the question we all ask each other as men. Is there something more here than just a friendship? Maybe. Two. Go. Ooh, man, I really like that machine. Sometimes you just look at a machine and the angles look like they just f***ed up. Interesting, close grip from Chris here, which means he's not going to be able to do a whole lot of locking out, which for the chest really isn't important anyway, so no big deal. I um, We'll see how deep he goes and how deep he takes the stretch. I normally would have taken a slightly wider grip to preferentially train the chest, but I don't think this is the wrong answer here. So let's see how, uh, how this goes. Three, good. Come on, Chris. Yeah, so uh, this machine is a good machine, but I say it's not a great machine and here's why. The way the lever arm works means the load is going to be relatively higher as experienced by your joints, connective tissues and muscles closer to lockout and relatively lower closer to the stretch. And I think it should be reversed. A lot of machine manufacturers have done this with their machines over the years to do what is called accommodating resistance that as your position gets stronger, it's, it's, you're stronger from here to here than you are from here to here. The load gets heavier so that you can have an equal amount of stimulus all the way up and down. For overall body strength, this, this is a superior way to train. It's the best. For hypertrophy, it's been shown time and time again that emphasizing the deep stretch is actually superior to having that accommodating resistance all the way through lockout. So what I would like is for this machine 
to have an arrangement. And this is actually a very easy modification to make to a machine like this with just a bit of welding. Well, spot welding never hurt anyone. Essentially change the direction of lever arms such that the weight is the furthest out horizontally with respect to gravity at the very bottom. And that as you push, the weight comes up all the way until it's barely effective at the top. And that means a huge stretch component and a smaller contraction component, which I think would make this movement much more close to ideal. Squeeze. Good. Two more. Push, push. Come on, Chris. Good. You did pause at the top. I like that. Push again. One more. Partials now. Give me five partials. Go. One. Go. Two. Go. Partials are a great idea in this exercise. Bottom end partials when you're no longer strong enough to lock it out. You do partials at the deep stretch position, and that's a great way to extend a set and get even more hypertrophy. Good job. More control on the eccentric would be great here. There's a little quick on the eccentric reps. One of the reasons why people like to rush the eccentric is the fact that they get really in their head about the RP Hypertrophy app. Training for muscle growth is never going to be the same. They get really in their head about, I wanna do more reps. And if I can make each repetition a little bit quicker and easier, I can do more reps. But we're not there to do reps. We are there to stimulate the muscle as much as possible. So if you can slow the eccentric, and that gives you fewer reps, but it maximizes how much muscle growth you stimulate, that's a good thing. The other thing is control the eccentric hurts. It's really uncomfortable. And so a lot of people will continue to move a little faster, me included, when it hits the fan, to try to get through that quicker so I don't experience as much pain. So definitely something to keep in mind. Ooh, my God. Scott's a video guy. We need one of these machines in our gym, bro. Right. Oh, man. It's like the perfect machine, I would say. Dude, <laughs> it's hell got yeah. Things. It's got all the things. <laughs> so this machine is a machine press with, first of all, a skull crusher attachment behind and uh, with an easy bar version and also a built-in cambered bar for that ball or deep stretch. Now, as you can see, Mr. Hani Ranbad is in the way again, uh, putting his hand onto Chris's chest. I'm gonna guess almost purposelessly is my personal opinion, no offense to anybody. And uh, he's actually directly getting away with Chris getting a bigger stretch with the cam. So I would say if Chris took maybe a little bit of a wider grip or similar grip and uh, Hani moved his hand out of the way, Chris could touch and pause at that bar to his chest. And that would be a huge deficit, huge stretch, huge growth. This would be the best of all worlds. Push. Seven. Now it's working. Now this became a working set. Okay, with me. You just said this just became a working set. And then Chris failed. No, my friend, Mr. Honey, this just almost ended being a working set. And now you are going to do some four straps. Now, that's me being an asshole. Charitably, I think what he meant to say was now that we're super close to failure, the fractional stimulus from every additional rep is really high, which is totally true. And I think he's gonna help him along to milk that shit out a little bit more. Good. One more. <sighs> yeah, rush decentric on that. I don't love that. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. Go. Good job. <sighs> Put down. Keep it moving. They sure are doing a lot of exercises. I am inclined to believe this was all in one day. This is all in order in one day, and I don't think Chris has used any of these machines before. Interesting. And it's, and it's near ish to the Olympia. Near ish to the Olympia, and a lot of novelty. I hope he recovers from this. A lot of volume. <sighs> I, I, I honestly. It strains my imagination as to what people think putting their hand on someone is doing. I think that if you're really having trouble feeling out some muscles, someone can touch them for you to help you feel out where they are, especially muscles that are behind you. So back muscles, lower lats, etc. I think someone touching those lats while they're moving and telling you, hey, really focus on pulling from here. I think that's uh, not a bad idea. But I think the chest is someone of Chris Bumstead's training age knows exactly what his chest feels like. It's always connected to a mind muscle. Also, the chest is preposterously easy to connect to mind muscle in most cases. Um, I think the utility of having someone touch your chest and remind you that it's there is quite small. Not really any downsides other than the personal comfort of someone touching you all the time, uh, which again, I'm just being persnickety, but I'm not a huge fan of, but I just, um, 
Maybe to me, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I absolutely could be wrong. Good, we we'll do one more set. I think you're pretty toast. My chest is pretty toast right now. One more set, my chest is pretty toasty. Good, sounds like a good time to switch to something else. So on the order of the exercises, with the chest, any stimulus, stimulative exercise to the chest are really just all good. You can do your flies first, you can do your presses first. Whatever feels better for you is really no wrong answers. As for the order of the exercises here, I don't see a grand logic any more um, complex than let's try a bunch of different machines and hit a bunch of different angles. There's quite a bit of redundancy. They use several different kinds of flies, several different kinds of presses. They do do some flat pressing and some incline pressing, which I like and some flying, which I like, but I would say one fly movement, one incline press and one flat press, it's kind of all you need for your chest training. And when you're doubling up or tripling up on various fly movements, you could just do more sets of the same movement, save that variation for months later, come back to a new machine and hit it. So here's the problem. If you're always using six or seven machines in your chest training, you only have access to six or seven machines. When a few of them get stale, what do you do? You can't keep training them, they're stale, they hurt your joints now, they don't give you a big pump, they're annoying, you hate doing them. What is the alternative? Do you switch to other exercises? Well, you've already worked through others. Maybe they're all getting stale at the same time. So what I like to do is take two or three chest movements, even as many as three or four per week, split up to different sessions, leave another three or four movements completely out of my plan, do that plan for one, two, three months, maybe for beginners, three, four, five, six months. When chest exercises start to get stale, I take the ones that are most stale, I throw them out of the program and I replace them with ones that I haven't trained in months. I program them with very low volumes and then I get a crap load out of them. So it's kind of a rotating system. That's how I prefer it versus doing much longer exercises or much longer routines with a whole bunch of different exercises in them at the same time. All right, if you guys are enjoying this video and you wanna see more, we have an unfiltered sort of unrated for sure members channel video. If you subscribe to our membership, link in the description below, then you can see that video and many other unfiltered raw unedited videos and a ton of other content. Give that a click. Three, two, yeah. Good, slow, good job. That's it. So he's coming back up quite fast and that's not ideal. You wanna come back up slow. Reduces injury risk, increases the amount of muscle growth potential you get out of the exercise. So, yeah, I would like to see that addressed, ideally. Ooh, Chest that's up. why he's Mr. O. Look at them lats. His lats got lats. And I love how he's able to pop his shoulders in that pose. When I do that pose, it just looks like someone giving up on life. Beautiful. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a fifth title right there. He was correct. He did, in fact, win a fifth Mr. Olympia shortly after the recording of this video. Again, we got some tactile stuff going on. I get, I just, Chris Bump said his line of people trying to touch him. I got, I, love, I got a lot of love for that, but also a lot of jealousy, as you can tell. Right here. Beautiful. Come on. So Chris has plenty of eccentric control, especially up towards the top of that stretch. It looks like he's mega putting an awesome stretch on his lats. He's coming down quite low, but he's not trying to touch his chest or anything. I used to be a big advocate of that, but after perusing the literature more recently, it turns out the peak contraction isn't the most wise use of your time in the gym. And so focusing on that top stretch, focusing that control, really getting his lats to pop out at the top, I think makes this uh, what I would call very good technique. All right, so from what I can tell, very good technique. Um, especially on those one arm rows. I would like to see Chris do a little bit more of a full range of motion, especially on that eccentric. By a small margin, I think he was doing very well. I would love for him to control his descent more. I think he'll just get more out of the movement with less fatigue. I would love for him to bend over further on his bent rows and potentially choose machines that are better at accentuating that deep stretch and that contraction. But honestly, we don't often have a choice of all the machines in the world that are perfect. And the machines that he does use, he uses them pretty well. So I would rate his back training uh, as, uh, you know, 8.5 out of 10. And I would also rate his chest and tricep training at roughly 8.5 out of 10. I would say the biggest areas for improvement, if you're watching this and you want to copy it for yourself, try to do a slightly full range of motion, slightly deeper into that eccentric on chest, on triceps, and on back, emphasizing that pause and that eccentric control at all times. Technique, technique, technique. Chris is doing a great job. You can take these lessons and do a superlative job because your genetics probably aren't as good as his. You will see the kind of growth that's very meaningful to you, even though with just a great job, he can be five-time Mr. Olympia. In your case, you might have to go above and beyond to get all the gains you got coming to. So in any case, that's my analysis. What do I know? I don't know, not much. 
But if you want to see other videos of us critiquing folks and all with the best in mind, unless you're a charlatan like Dr. Oz, in which case, f you. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going with that. See you guys next time. Wait, guys, don't leave. There's this other video YouTube wants you to click on so you can continue on your RP K-hole and learn more and also be entertained and maybe question your sexuality. Go ahead and click on the video. Nothing bad will happen.